Hi, this is Lexi Nieto, voice of Tomo Aizawa from Tomo-chan is a Girl, and you're listening to Podcast Across Worlds, Hawaii's number one anime podcast. Welcome to Podcast Across Worlds, where we like to read a lot of manga, watch a lot of anime, and talk about it for hours. I'm your host, Lehua Superfina. In today's episode, we're going to talk about manga, manuas, webtoons that we are reading at the moment. For those of you who don't know, I actually like to read these mangas, manhwas, webtoons on my phone because it's just so easy. It's accessible. I I literally hold my phone everywhere with me and it's just so easy to just read off of it. I do have a iPad and yes, the screen is bigger, but I always have my phone on me and it's really good to you know, when you're waiting, you can just pull it out and read. It's so easy. Oh my gosh. But besides that, the first title we're going to go over is The Grand Duke is Mine. Let's see. Genres are drama, fantasy, manhwa, and romance. The summary for this is, if you got a second chance at life, what would you do differently? If Ignat's life was a Shakespearean story, the genre would be a tragedy. Oh dear. But when her death triggers a do-over for some of her life's most significant events, she is determined to approach each choice carefully and with the most informed intentions. But with so many obstacles in the way, will she succeed in creating a different life than her last? Her pursuit of happily ever after with the Grand Duke is only about to begin. This one piques my interest because I love stories with regression, do-overs, right the wrongs, make those changes that you always want to because I feel like a lot of us, we've always had those moments where we have an argument and maybe hours later we go over that argument and we think, man, I should have said that. I should have said this. I should have done that. And so with this story with regression, I kind of live vicariously through them. I'm like, yeah, let me get these achievements through this character. Now, in this story, when you see the cover, it's like a woman with these two guys. One is like a, a grown adult and the other one is a kid. This looks like, okay, either she married the Duke and he already had a kid or this is their kid now. You don't know. And when you're reading the story, we're not even there yet. Like, we don't know how far this cover is. This is probably at the end. I'm just saying. This is probably the end of the story. And we won't get there until maybe chapter 100, chapter 200. It's quite long, the pacing. Like, we're just in the beginning of the story. I'm, like, at chapter 26. So, yeah. I became the wife of the monstrous crown prince. Genres are adventure, fantasy, romance, shoujo. The summary for this story is she transmigrated into the body of Antia, the current wife of the monstrous crown prince Blake, in a R19 romance novel. In the original story, Antia committed suicide on the day of their marriage leaving Blake with massive trauma. But this time, Antia wouldn't do such a thing. Blake was the second male lead in the original novel. He was portrayed as a beast that possessed an exquisite facade. Yet, right now, he was behaving just like an innocent rabbit. The only person who can remove the crown prince's curse is the heroine, Diana. My role is is to just keep this little boy from getting hurt, and then step down in time. Antia, don't leave me. This little rabbit keeps chasing me. So what they left out was Antia, the female lead in this story, the one that got reincarnated. I hope I'm saying her name right. It's like A-N-C-I-A. Antia, 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 whatever. She is the older sister of the female lead, Diana. That's what they left out in this summary. So what she was trying to do was keep the position of the wife of the second male lead 
and give it to her sister or somehow make sure her sister kind of has like a nice ending too and then fade away now she becomes really involved with the family she gets involved with the crown prince's father she gets involved with politics she gets involved with a lot of stuff and then they get older and blake is attached to her she's the first human the first person to see him as another fellow human and she actually helps mend the relationship between him and his father because he's always saying, oh, I'm cursed. My father doesn't like me. No, 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 no. That's not what was happening. And Nancy kind of reveals that through the story. Now, at the moment, I'm at chapter 93 and um, yo, there is world building. There's more to this story. There's like reincarnation on top of reincarnation. There's gods, goddesses. There's all kinds of stuff going on and it is going really good usually stories that go this far like 93 chapters they kind of fizzle out and they i lose interest i'm pretty sure i'm not the only one who does this let me know that just is lo-fi coffee house genre is drama fantasy manhwa romance and webtoons the summary for this is Loana was raised in neglect and isolation as an illegitimate child at, of the Count Louis family. She gets married off to Duke Bruggen, who orders her to keep quiet and out of the way. Free from all expectations or responsibilities, she roams around the castle and runs into a coffee bush. A passionate barista in her past life, Loana remembers exactly how to brew a perfect cup of joe. The trouble is, no one in this realm seems to know what coffee is, nor its wonderful benefits. As a matter of fact, coffee fruits are regarded as evil. As a coffee aficionado, Luana is determined to turn this reputation around. I really like this story. This is one of my favorite stories, one of the stories that I anticipate for updates of chapters. It's so good because she just wants to make coffee she just wants to drink coffee it reminds me of that other story about the duchess and tea oh that's also a good one but we'll talk about that one later besides that so loana she gets married off to a duke she has a very trashy family her family's trash and they think that he is the duke he the duke is horrible and they don't want to marry off their legitimate child so they marry off Luana the illegitimate child and she's supposed to be sort of like a hostage type of wife and that's why the duke says keep quiet stay out of the way just do your thing like I know you're in this situation that you don't like I'm in this situation I don't like we're, we're both forced to get married to each other so lay low do your thing and I'll do my thing and so Luana does, and she discovers that there's this coffee bush in the greenhouse, and apparently the Duke's mom was into exotic plants, and no one in this area, this country, knew how to cultivate, produce, and use the coffee beans, because it's quite complicated it's the whole concept of picking the berries drying them up roasting them blah 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 it's not common especially when there's lack of technology you know and speaking of lack of technology in order for her to make some of this stuff she enlists the help of a magician and then that brings in like the stereotypes of magicians they're like kind of like scientists and they're very reclusive not social and when she introduces coffee to them they're like "Ooh, let's find different ways to make coffee and she has all these ideas she's like okay guys i got this blueprint i want to make an espresso machine and then you see how in this world that the author has created how they make an espresso machine so this story is really good and then she also shows how how amazing coffee is to society so these you know at one point coffee was for commoners and such and now they're for nobles but none of the nobles know about this you see none of the nobles know that 
blah, 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 blah. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Well, what I'm trying to say is it's new. They're all used to tea, liquor, coffee. They're like, what is this? And she's like, let me show you. And you see here, try to understand some of these characters. Like, okay, you're, you like sweet things. So I'm going to make a sweet coffee for you. Oh, you like super sweet things. We're going to mix some ice cream with this coffee for you. Oh, you like liquor. And so she finds different ways to incorporate the coffee with things people like already. Mm-hmm. She's like, I'm going to make you like coffee. Tyrant wants a better life. Genre is drama, fantasy, manhwa, romance, shoujo, webtoons. Summary is, Yorthe has always been discriminated against and ignored by others. In the end, she decided to kill all her brothers and take the throne. She received no response from the son she loved. In the end, she was widely criticized as a tyrant and was executed. When she opened her eyes, she found herself back in her childhood. Can't just let it end like this. She was determined not to let the same fate repeat two lives. Definitely live a good life this time. That was her goal. Okay, this summary is buggy. First of all, brothers were... No, she only had one brother. One brother, that was it. And a son, no, she didn't have a son. It was actually an advisor. It was a friend that became an advisor, her close confidant who betrayed her. And the reason why I did like quotations is because we find out there's, you know, other sides of the story. But we only found this out like chapter 60. So we found out way, 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 way in there. So she is... She was a tyrant. And the reason why she was a tyrant was because she had like this inferiority experience going on. Because apparently with this royal family, they're supposed to be able to use light magic, have a relationship with a light spirit. Unfortunately, she couldn't. So she's kind of like the, the outsider, the royal who couldn't use or couldn't utilize the light spirit. Shame! And she tries to compensate this with intelligence, with physical, with politics, with every subject she could master. She excelled in them. Like, she was better than her brother, who was the crown prince. She was better at him at all these things, except for light magic. That's it. And so, I would be really stressed i would be very upset too if i was never acknowledged for all these achievements for being dismissed for all these things that i want to do i can do just because i couldn't do one thing light spirit really there's just something off about her father he's just so hung up on this one thing that she can't do and totally dismisses all these other qualities that she has he doesn't utilize her as a tool he doesn't utilize her as something useful some someone who he can work with and it's weird <laughs> i think it's weird because you would think a ruler would want to maximize right no, he doesn't. There's something going on. I think some voodoo shenanigans is going on with him, but that has not been revealed. And hopefully I'm right, because I feel like I am. Finding Camellia. Genres are drama, gender bender, historical, romance, tragedy. The summary for this is, her life was nothing but lies. Camellia was just 12 when she was taken away from her mother in the slums and forced to live as the son of an aristocratic family. But under the layers of secrets and lies, she never forgets. She continues to struggle to be her true self again, to reclaim the life of Camellia. Yo, this story really grabs you. However... The updating of the chapters was taking quite a long time for me. And so it was like, oh my gosh, I'm just going to wait until five chapters update so I can see the story progress. Because some of these chapters really got stuck on certain scenes where it's like three chapters was like one scene. 
And so <laughs> I would wait until a little bit more chapters updated. But besides that, I'm a sucker for gender bender stories. I've been so into those ever since I was in junior high with like manga of like, uh, what was the story about this girl who really liked this guy who was in, what was it like something like triathlon track? He was in track and he wanted to do like the high jumps. And so she do like, she liked to do high jumps too. And she wanted to be in the same school as him, but he went to all boys school. And so she decided to disguise herself as a boy so she could be on the same team as him. Blah, 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 blah. You know, that kind of stuff. I love gender bender stories. So I was a sucker for this one. However, it is tragic. It's really sad. She's forced to be a boy, to be a sub in case her older brother dies. That is really tragic. And then it turns out he doesn't die. And so she sacrificed her life to be a man. Only for her brother to not need a replacement. Only for that. She was forced to be away from her mom. She thought her mom died. No, she didn't think her mom died. She was looking for her mom. We thought she died. So we're thinking, girl, you're never going to find your mom. She's dead. And that was one of her goals is be free, be a girl again, look for her mom. And us readers are like, dang, you're going all through that. Just look for your dead mom. Gosh. And then to throw it in there, we got this male lead, tall, dark, and handsome. At first, she piques his interest, and then he finds out she's a girl. And then instead of blackmailing her, he like helps her from behind the scenes. But he had, he kind of does like this boy teases girl he likes kind of thing to a point where it's really confusing. It gives mixed signals. It Camille really feels like this guy hates her. But that's not the case. And then he's working behind the scenes too. And then we get some world building. There's like some politics going on. Schemes. Yo, this is really good. We're at chapter... What's the chapter? Chapter 96. And we finally got the scene we wanted at chapter 96. And there you have it, guys. These are the titles that we've been reading recently. Did you recognize any of them? What were your thoughts on them? And if you're not familiar with some of these titles, which one piqued your interest? And if they did, let us know what they are. That way we can kind of focus on them, talk about them more, especially with my co-host, Mikhail Casanova. We can talk about like the story, the characters, like we can go into detail other than that if you guys like this please leave a review let us know what you think don't forget to do the polls the quizzes and such engage with this episode other than that i'm your host lahila superfina keep reading manga keep watching anime and keep listening to podcasts across worlds we'll see you on the next one ahoy ho Thank you for listening to Podcasts Across Worlds. This is a passion project that was created by Lehua Superfina and is co-hosted by myself, Mikhail Casanova. If you enjoyed this episode and any of the topics that we talk about or any of the guests and voice actors and various people we have on the show, then make sure you do us a solid by, if you're watching it on YouTube, which is on youtube.com slash Lehua Superfina, then make sure you like the video, share it around with someone you think would enjoy it, as well as leave a comment on what you think could be improved or what you liked, what you didn't like, and all that in between. If you're listening to the show on any of the major podcasting outlets, such as Amazon Music, Spotify, TuneIn Radio, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or any of the others, then make sure you leave a rating, leave a comment, interact with the polls that we put out, and so much more. If you want to support the show, we do have Patreon, as well as many other methods for supporting. And with that being said, we're signing out. We hope you enjoyed this, and we look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Keep listening, keep watching, and keep enjoying podcasts across worlds. We'll see you around.